Hi everyone, this is SR Coder here. I'm just making a quick video uh, just to complain a little bit about the Unity multiplayer networking and the state of that as it stands right now in 2021. Basically, if you're sticking with Unity, uh, you're faced with having to uh, adopt the ML API library or use the uh, the other Unity multiplayer networking stuff that's coming along with the, um, the Unity transport. One of the big issues you're going to be faced with is you, you expect to be able to, uh, if you're doing Unity, you expect to be able to um, make it needs to be made fairly simple. But if you look at this boss room sample, it's pretty complicated. Even these bite-sized samples, it doesn't look like it's a simple solution. If you look at the boss room sample, um, even the installation isn't exactly beginner friendly. And uh, as a teacher, I want to try and make it so that uh, I try to make things that are relatively complicated to try and make them relatively simple but I'm kind of uh, tearing my hair out a little bit over how complicated this is becoming. Um, Unity used to be all about democratizing the uh, game development and making it easy for beginners and when you look at the Unity's homepage you do see that they try and do that but when you look at some of the recent changes with things like dots um, to try and make performance uh, the priority and the entity component system again for the same thing if you if you've dug uh, into those and had a little look they're anything but user friendly and uh, it really is not something that a beginner should be looking to do so you're just starting to wonder who the main person is or who the who the uh, target audience are for the unity game engine and uh, increasingly i'm starting to think that it's not beginners is the target the target audience is not beginners at all uh, and that it's the uh, the the studios and the ones that are actually giving them money and that's fair enough um there are when it comes to multiplayer there's a fair few options available to you you can pretty much see from my uh, my stream uh, so my playlists here um i did a little bit on ml api uh, we've also done a little bit on the uh, on Mirror and on Pun. Uh, Photon Unity Networking, by far, for me, seems to be the, the easiest one for beginners. One of the main issues people come across really quickly when doing ML API, or even with Mirror, is um, how do we host this? How do we get people to join us when we're not on the same local area network? And uh, by far, the easiest option is uh, is to go with Pun. And if you look on my playlist, there is actually a pun uh, tutorial series um, that I did earlier on. So if you are keen and you haven't followed that through, then this solves a lot of the issues and a lot of the problems. And puns are um, really successful. Um, puns already done a whole heap of different um, videos, sorry, videos, uh, different uh, games. Um, and there's a ton of games that are already released that use pun as their main, uh, main multiplayer library um, inside of Unity. So you can see that it's successful and it's um, it's a complete end-to-end -end solution, including all the hosting. And obviously the, the trade-off for there is that uh, you're going to have to pay for that. The uh, pricing isn't completely free. Um, you do get up to 20 concurrent users for free. And after then you have to actually um, pay for more. But uh, when you're using Mirror or if you're using ML API, at the end of the day, you're probably not going to host it on your own desktop machine. You're going to have to pay in the end anyway. So you're going to have to pay for hosting if you do have something that you want other people to pl to, to uh, use and, and play. So um, this is, a, a, in my opinion, Photon Unity is one of the best ones to get you up and running. And you don't have to care too much about things like port forwarding um, in, your, in your server. You'll see that even in the boss room sample, one of their solutions in order to um, avoid people having to do port forwarding, uh, if you look further down here, we talk about this. Uh, it uses the Photon Transport for ML API, which I did in my earlier tutorial. This Photon Transport, basically, you may as well just use Pun. Um, the bottom line is that Pun has got a, whole of a, lot, a hell of a lot of stuff going on with it. And um, if you're going to be using the uh, the the um, concurrent users anyway you're going to be um, signing up for a photon account anyway you may as well just go pun um, straight up right from the beginning until they, they really manage to get some of the stuff sorted with ml api even just looking at the ml api roadmap um, if you just take a little uh, scroll down this ml api uh, roadmap what you start to see is things like um, these network variables improving those this is um, all um, currently in progress but not complete. Uh, simple things like having a network animator, you would think that um, every single other um, solution, um, Mirror and Pun, um, they've all got those already in place 
and things like um, the the scene transitions and stuff, additive scene support and things. These are all planned, but they're already um, in use and uh, and working. And the other ones, uh, network navigation meshes and stuff. All well, this is not even. Um, this is only just under consideration. So um, if you're looking for it's a nice, simple, beginner-friendly um, library, I would say just wait off, hold off for a little while. Um, don't necessarily do ML API, but just some look at some of the other options, um, either Pun or Mirror, and there is, as I mentioned, tutorials available for you. However, the big main question that I've got is, um, really, if you're going to want to do multiplayer, if multiplayer networking is uh, the thing you want to do, uh, you have to ask yourself the question, um, are you maybe trying to use a screwdriver to knock in a nail? Um, when I teach at school, um, when we do these uh, uh, game projects, one of the first things we do is kind of look at video games, look at the things we like, and make a design for a video game on top of that. Uh, if you're going to be using um, Unity 3D, then you can only do stuff that Unity 3D can kind of do well. And there are some 3D games out there, but not by indie developers, or not by not many by indie developers that haven't spent an awful lot of time in development. If you want to do a simple game, and it needs to be multiplayer, then you have to wonder whether uh, Unity is the best solution. So I'm just going to make a simple first-person shooter. Um, I'm going to make a multiplayer first-person shooter. I'm going to use um, Roblox Studio just to show how um, different uh, stuff makes things uh, easier or harder. Now, um, here's a simple uh, multiplayer shooter that I've already made. Um, just right now and all I needed to do was click on the template in order to get this uh, if you play this in uh, in Roblox Studio you can actually publish this and um, you can actually play this play this game as a multiplayer shooter so what it allows you to do is it allows you to concentrate on the actual level design rather than to worry uh, and the actual game design rather than worry about the, the underlying code all right now I've got a simple weapon I can go into first person I can fire this um, and I can uh, I can compete against other people, and all the game logic's already in place, so I can worry about the actual design of the game. So you wanted some more weapons, uh, and you can't be bothered coding them all yourself, but you just want to concentrate on the level design. Well, you can do that. So you can just choose a, a weapon. Um, you add it to your um, add it into your um, inventory, and uh, you go back into Roblox Studio here and oh, I, just, I was changing the configuration you go into Roblox Studio here and that shotgun you can just click on that shotgun right here and it says do you want to put it in your starter pack you say yes so it's putting three tools into my starter pack so not only do I have the rocket launcher I've also got these three guns uh, if I hit this one um, I can I can just quickly and I've changed the configuration so we didn't have to wait so long for the game to start um, and that was just one line of code that I managed to uh, to find and uh, you start this game you can see that you can easily uh, now I've got a shotgun and I can fire, uh, choose between the different shotguns and fire that. The cool thing about this uh, that's not Unity is that it's not built, it's uh, built for multiplayer so um, the actual process of building a game um, and uh, testing it with uh, with connected clients is uh, is streamlined and it's completely seamless. So if you just jump over to the uh, test tab here and uh, and you want to just test it with maybe two connected clients, um, you can do that. So you just, uh, all it does is it does all of this hard work for you. So it's actually got um, server uh, code that you can write that's specifically just for server. And you've got the client side code that you write, which is just for client. And I've, I've developed games with, uh, with, some, with some kids um, at school. And uh, we've had a heck of a lot of fun uh, with Roblox games. It's just been so much, uh, so much easier to uh, develop a multiplayer. Uh, not to mention that you can do um, online cooperative Google Docs style level design, where you can have more than one person um, running around um, doing level design at the same time as you are uh, are working on it. So you actually see them moving objects around live um, in the game. It's just kind of cool that you can have these, uh, these say uh, this game that's so simple to be able to test um, multiplayer um, inside of a, a game engine that is used by uh, literally millions of people every single day. Uh, to be honest, there's actually quite a good a, a bunch of uh, learning resources um, that you can have uh, within units within um, within Roblox as well. 
there is a uh, the Roblox uh, community is fairly big, a uh, fair amount of developers. There's a few um, video tutorials, uh, a few people on YouTube as well. But the bottom line is the API reference is all inside here too. And if it's a uh, it's a Lua programming um, language, which is uh, fairly easy to use, not too difficult, and runs completely concurrently, so you don't have to uh, worry too much about. Um, the, the order of things you can yield at any point within your code and it, it just works. If you look back at the Roblox Studio, the code itself doesn't look too bad. For example, in this um, in this example, uh, inside um, where do we go? Inside the configurations, you'll see there's just a few uh, a few values that are stored within this table um, that allow and you can change any one of these. Uh, you've got some functions that you get called and you attach those functions. You connect those. Uh, functions to specific events that happen on the uh, on the server or on the client. Uh, it's actually quite fun to program and uh, very hierarchy based. You can see everything that's in your scene um, just uh, on this uh, explorer on the right hand side. So it's something that's quite fun. The other one that's getting a heck of a lot of um, coverage right now is the Core Engine. So Core Engine's a Unreal Engine based. Um, a creation studio it's a uh, trying to be roblox and uh, actually even uses a lua programming language and uh, it does uh, seem so similar in the way that it does stuff to to roblox um but again you want to make a multiplayer first person shooter or third person shooter team deathmatch um whatever you want to do uh, you can you can easily do s just do that so um you can decide to make a first person team deathmatch and um, give it a title title of my game and uh, then you just hit go and you have a multiplayer uh, first person shooter that you can test and play and uh, it's as simple as that again you're going to have to commit some learning some time to learning it um, there's a bunch of uh, of learning resources again um, in here and uh, inside of the uh, the core's main library so you can actually get some support and some tutorials you can play other people's games that they've been making um, the cool thing is that it does it doesn't require that you um, do 3D modeling the models that you make both in Roblox and in and, and in this game engine. Um, the models that you make are all done with the tools that they have with all the templates um, and, uh, and 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 uh, objects that they have, and you put them together to make more complex objects. And it actually does some clever stuff in the background to make sure that it. Um, that it's optimized and that it doesn't require a lot of loading time and to be honest um, it's actually kind of a cool thing because um, being a game being a game developing teacher uh, the first models that your students make are tend not to be the most optimized in the world so uh, the end to they can actually cause the, the game to lag and so for beginners um, doing this um, you're you have a limited set of tools but it allows you just to um, use those tools so to use your creative um, your creative skills and uh, and just make something cool and all this is all completely editable and again just like um just like when we had the roblox one if you want to be able to play this with uh, more than one person uh, it's super easy to do rather than um as you would do inside of unity rather than do that you just have to click one button decide how many people you want to test this with and uh, and then hit go and uh, and it'll create two um two instances um, that are actually on my other window so I'll bring them over here I'll create two instances of this um, of this game if I can find my other one here we go um, so we've got two instances of this game going and uh, resume on this side actually pretty annoying when you can't do that but um, you can see that there's actually two instances of the game and there's the other guy in the other corner somewhere if I can find them somewhere on my map I'll be able to shoot him and everything is done so as a as a developer as a game designer um, all you really have to do is concentrate on the um, on the actual uh, and, uh, and then gameplay and testing and uh, yeah so you have to worry um, if you're not really if you're absolutely set on making multiplayer games you have to wonder whether uh, in 2021 as unity stands right now if uh, unity or unity ml api is actually your best choice so don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Unity, I really do. Um, I use this little uh, image here, I use this with my students all the time, um, that sometimes uh, you want to pick the right tool for the job. 
And uh, if your job is making multiplayer games, then um, maybe the tool that you want to use might not be Unity. Um, and there are other ones out there and uh, and you don't want to just bang your head against the wall yeah you can knock a nail in with a screwdriver if you hit hard enough but uh, it's not the best tool for the job and you probably shouldn't be using it um, it brings me back to that whole point so there's a bunch of different options out there and I know you guys a lot of people that watch my uh, video tutorials you love unity too and I love unity and I want to I want to make more tutorials with unity um, but I also uh, I also like making multiplayer games because uh, it's one of the most requested features from any of my students and from uh, um, obviously from my, my, the people who watch my videos as well so uh, if you do want me to do some tutorials on other stuff then uh, please uh, add some comments to uh, to this video and um, I can easily do simple tutorials on Roblox and tutorials on um, Core uh, just to fill in any of the gaps and uh, give you a little bit of a, an insight into what I've learned about both of those game engines so far uh, there's also Krata, which is a new engine that's come out um, recently, which uh, has a, a really cool voxel-based level editing kind of uh, software built in, um, in combination with the all the other stuff that goes in with both Roblox and with Core. So please um, make some comments, uh, let me know. Um, I, I'm happy to do some more tutorials on even things like doing uh, PUN, uh, Photon Unity Networking. I really want to revisit that again, and uh, maybe it might... Uh, has had some some recent changes and it's one of by far one of the simplest ones to get up and running um in a multiplayer game so uh yeah please uh as i mentioned make some comments like and subscribe and um i'll see you all again soon for my next uh, tutorial series and it's kind of up to you as to what that one is